So we're now on verse 187, part C, part 3. And we have been taught, we've spoken in the previous passage about the permissibility when one is uh, has broken one's fast, i.e. when dusk has set in, that one is allowed to have sexual relations, one is allowed to eat, and one is allowed to drink, up until the clear dawn. And so in this passage of this verse, he's clarifying what is permissible to do whilst what when the fast has finished. Whilst the previous verses were talking about what is not permissible to do, that when one has to fast, is to focus on the fast in the day. And so Allah says, after saying, um, eating and drinking until the, the clear dawn has come in, so now one is engaged in the fast, and Allah says, Then. Now then has two meanings in there, in, in, or thumma, sorry, has two meanings in Arabic, and within the Quran specifically, is it can either translate as then in terms of time, which seems to be the context here, um, and it also can mean, and on top of that, so when the uh, thumb is not expressing that one thing ha is happening after the other, and there's, there's uh, sort of a, a, a sense of uh, l length of time, it's not a short time, so obviously from refraining to eating and then continuing to fast up until the night. Or it can mean, if it doesn't express that, it can mean, and on top of that, and moreover, it can translate as well, which we call التراخي الرتبي, or رتبي in Arabic, right, to show interest, even more focus and more interest on that specific point that comes after thumma. But here it seems very much to to do so with time. So thumma atimmu. So we notice we've had a lot of commands here, which is a nice practice of the the amr, the command in the different forms that you study in the ten forms class that I teach. So we have a tamma. This is a form three or a form four in the classic definition or categorization. A tamma yutimmu. Okay, so a fa'ala yufridu. So a tamma means to complete something. And this is the command, atimmu, okay? It's because the kasa um, indicates that. And then the wow on the end tells me it's plural. So it's a command, just like the previous commands. It's commanding, and then complete all of you, Muslims, as siyam, the fast, or fasting, until the night. Now, um, Allah could have said, Akmilu. And he did use Akmilu in a previous passage that we've studied, if you remember. Um, when he was talking about completing the days of fasting. Okay. So notice Allah used in the previous verse, Kamula to complete. And here he says, Atimmu. So what's the difference between um, the root Tamama? And the root kamala. Now notice a, a timbal is the more the focus is more on the parts within the structure. Okay, so looking at the individual parts. Whilst kamala is looking at the overall completion. And so for example, if you were looking at a cake and all the little parts, all the parts are on the cake, okay, but they've not been complete placed in uh, whereby the whole intricate design is complete, that would be kamal. That would be root, looking at it as an overall completion. And so notice in the previous verse, Allah talks about completing the number of the month of Ramadan. I.e., the focus is on finishing Ramadan as a whole. Whilst this is not talking about the month of Ramadan completing it, it's talking about completing the fast um, throughout the day up until the night. And so that's the difference between um, the root tamama and kamala. So Allah says, Thumma atimu siyama ilale, to the night. And it obviously doesn't mean the night in terms of right into the night, because 
we know that we are meant to break our fast as soon as we are sure that dusk has come in. So thumma atimul siyam. So i.e., you've got to hold to fasting. You, once you've started the fast, you have to complete it um, and hold to it. Obviously, unless there's um, there's um, uh, circumstances that prevent you from fasting, of course. Um, but the general warning is you hold to the fast and dedicate yourself to it up until the night comes in. So ila means once the night actually enters. And so it doesn't mean right on the edge of it because that's impossible. I, when, as, soon, as soon as the night, the, the day ends and the night's in, then we have to break our fast. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, he didn't hesitate in breaking his fast. Unlike the traditions of the people before, the Jews and the Christians, um, and, and other traditions maybe, is that they, they wanted to display their uh, strength and their, their rigour uh, and resilience and actually continue their fast, which we call in Arabic wisal, which means continuing the fast and not breaking it, which is haram. It was permissible for the Prophet them to carry out, but for the Muslim Ummah it's not permissible says and so it's recommended to break your fast as soon as the night comes in as soon as dusk comes in and that's what the scholars say about this as well is that if someone um, wasn't sure if someone was um, had was eating before Fajr um, and then didn't know whether the dawn had come in it, it wasn't sure whether the dawn had come in, uh, come in or not and he eats and then discovers that the dawn had come in, that he has to make up the fast deal, but there's no kafara. How, whereas if someone was in doubt whether um, the fast was out or not, he didn't check, he didn't give, uh, you know, he didn't assert, uh, he didn't try to ascertain whether the fast was broken or not, and he breaks it, knowing that there's doubt, then that's a kafara. Okay, there's a slight detail there. Then Allah says, now you'd assume thumma atimul siyama ila layl, up into the night. So in the night, what can we do? We can eat, we can drink, and we can have sexual relations. But Allah clarifies now that that's not um, the case for everybody. There's an exception here. So remember, we've been speaking about sex and then food and drink. So Allah says, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ So this is a, a nahi here. We've done this, seen this verb um, now. Bashara, form 3 or form 5 in my, the, the way I thought, uh, teach it. Bashara, you bashir. So don't have sexual relations with them. Hunna, the women. This is la nahi. Notice because the noon's gone, so it's in the state of jazm. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ And don't embrace one another, literally. And, and uh, come into contact with one another. وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ So this wow is hal. We won't translate it as and. It translates as whilst. So do not have sexual relations with them. Whilst you are عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ So Allah uses the active participle here. So we've got the verb عَاكِفَ يَعْكِفُ And then the person that's doing this is an akif. An akif, uh, the root means to adhere to something or to hover around something as you're focusing on it and sticking to it, ignoring everything else. That's the link to, um, the, to this word uh, akuf. And this is where we get the word itikaf from. So Allah s establishing and clarifying that Yes, you can eat and drink once night comes in, and you can have sexual relations, because that's the context we've been speaking about, unless you are in a state of it, unless you are performing itikaf. So, aqifun means you, and notice Allah could have used a verb here, he could, wa antum ta'akifuna fil masajid, for example, but he uses the noun, and it's in the plural, because of the way we're known, masculine sound plural, because antum. And this uh, using a noun sentence over a verb sentence is more emphatic. So you have made a determined decision to uh, to adhere to the mosques, 
وأنتم عاكفون في المساجد. And notice he uses the plural over the singular في المساجد. So you will be in different mosques. And so this shows the, and there's a difference of opinion about this, but the overwhelming majority of scholars said that the i'tikaf is valid in any kind of mosque. Um, some said it's only valid in, because this al, masajid, does it refer to, is it an al of reference? Is it generic? Is it speaking just about mosques in general? Does it mean all the mosques? I, every mosque is valid as well. Or is it speaking about specific mosques? And so some scholars said that Itikaf is only valid in uh, the Haram in Mecca or Masjid al Nabawi or Masjid al Aqsa. Some have had, had, held that opinion, but it's not the predominant opinion, it's not what the majority have held. But the idea is that what is the idea of Itikaf? Itikaf is that you make a resolute, you're resolute uh, to just give your all. To being in the mosque. Why? Because you want to perform all four or five prayers in the mosque and be waiting for the prayers between them in order to gain the barakah of those last ten days and to maybe catch Laylatul Qadr, the night of power or destiny, um, and gain that reward. And so that's the idea of itikaf. And so Allah implies in that verb akif is that you are not distracted by anything beyond. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that time. Now you might ask the question, how on earth are you going to have sexual relations in the mosque in the first place? Well what it means, what this insinuates, this passage, is that it's permissible for you to leave the mosque for a need. And so the Sahaba will go back to their homes in order to perform wudu or to relieve themselves. And it, there is a, a, a chance that one may linger there and end up having sexual relations with their wives. And so Allah's as clarifying is that no, you only, the ruling about etikaf is you only leave the precinct of the mosque for a, a need, such as, as I said, repeating your wudu, relieving yourself, getting your food, if, if, if someone can't come and give it to, or deliver it to you. And so that's all implied in this passage. So there's one last point is that there's, 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 there's a, um, a sort of, it, there's a, an implication here that some might think that this is not just relating to sex, this is relating to um, contact with the wife in terms of any kind of sexual contact. But this is clearly stating that that's not the case. Um, it's permissible for you to engage with your wife in etikaf because we know that the Prophet Sallallahu wife, Sophia, came to visit him in his times, but that you should not have sexual contact. That's, that's um, understood that what this, this is how this verb is being used, just as it is in the previous um, passage just before. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. Okay, take care, guys. Assalamu alaikum.